Thank you. Thank you. So is everyone having fun so far? Good, good, good. OK, so um, let's get this party started. You're optimizing the wrong things. Oh, this is actually the, the, fir the first slide. Um, so my talk is about your business, your product, your service. Uh, because I think a lot of people actually have the right idea about what's important for their business um, and what priorities their business should have. But once they actually go and do the work, that's something completely different. They actually end up doing different stuff because there's a lot of distractions out there, right? There's a lot of companies fighting for your attention, wanting you to do stuff in their tools, in their business, to make them money. So what I want to do is, hello, <laughs> is actually make sure that um, you are focusing on the stuff that's right for your business, that you're not optimizing the wrong things. So first thing. Don't A-B test. People are going to hate me for saying this. Um, I'm saying this, well, Google Optimize is actually being discontinued in September of this year. And that's what kind of triggered this thought for me. Because I'm like, should we actually replace this with something else, with a different tool that will probably cost us money? And I don't think you should, because a-B testing has become sort of synonymous with conversion rate optimization, which I also don't really agree with, because there's A-B testing in and of itself doesn't actually make sure that people will buy your product more, that people will keep buying your product more. You know what does that? It's actually improving your product. It's improving your branding. It's making sure that you're surfacing your customers in the right way. You can't think that just A-B testing is, a, is an end goal. It's not. So you need to improve your product and make sure that you keep doing that in the right way. Now, there are obviously sometimes ways that you can actually do A-B testing. But I think that the, the most important part here is that it keeps you away from the focus of just doing what's best for your business, which is improving your product. So I think that that's one of the reasons that I, I would say, you know, don't A-B test. And this is one of my pet peeves that I think, you know, if you do it, you need to do it right. And it will take a long time for you to actually need A-B testing in the first place. Because before you actually can make this work, you have to make two ver at least two variations of everything that you're doing. So that's a lot of time and effort that you're going to spend on actually building different variations, and which you will not get a return on investment for, up until you actually have enough revenue. And these marginal changes might actually make you enough money to explain the investment that you're doing that you're making on the testing and on the A-B variations. So especially in the first, I think, like a couple of years of your business, I think you should focus on just improving your product and making sure that you're doing that right instead of jumping into this, because all of this is going to be marginal. Then I have another one that people will despise me for, <laughs> which is don't advertise. I well, you know, I'm the CEO of Yoast, so obviously you, you would expect me saying this, but I really, really do not like advertising. Um, let me try and walk you through why I, think, why I think advertising is not really great. Reason number one, advertising is buying exposure. And I think you should, should and could get exposure in a much more sustainable way, right? You can't, if the, the problem with advertising is you're buying exposure, but the minute you stop paying, you lost your exposure. All the work you've done on, you know, maintaining and updating and optimizing all your ads is just basically gone the minute you stop working and you stop paying. And that's not really a great proposition to me. And then two, I have three reasons, by the way. Two is 
I'm almost forgetting. <laughs> but two, two, two is that it's really hard to actually stop advertising. Once you start, and start advertising, you can't really stop because your business has already done uh, a lot of your, your business has already grown, right? So, so you might make enough money on different sources on, you know, let's say organic. Um, th th that might be that might definitely be the case, but there's nothing, nothing that will stop you from actually stopping those ads because, well, there is a lot of that will stop you from stopping those ads because. Your ROAS, so your return on ad spend, is pretty great, but it might actually be cannibalizing what you're doing on other things, right? So it might, might actually be cannibalizing your organic traffic. It might actually be cannibalizing a lot of things. But will you actually be able, and will you actually dare to stop advertising at that point? Because it's still a very, it's making you money, and you have to risk not making that money to find out whether it's actually worth uh, whether it's actually worth it, basically. So, advertising is a thing that, that can definitely help you. Um, if, if, you know, you want to kickstart your business, it could definitely help you, but at, the, at that point, it's really hard to stop. And if you're, well, you know, advertising in one place where you could be doing it is for branding purposes, so people don't, you know, advertise on your brand name, that would be a, a great way to actually not, you know, make sure to, uh, to make sure that other people are not, are not advertising on your brand name. But those are basically, in my mind, the only two reasons that you should be doing this, at least in the early stages of your business. So advertising is not a sustainable marketing effort. And what I think is a sustainable marketing effort is SEO. You need to be thinking about what makes your business stand out. What makes your business actually worthwhile for your customers and your audience? And you need to focus on that. You need to focus on those things to make sure that they are actually engaged. You don't need to optimize uh, for, 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 you know, you don't need to buy your customers. You need to convince your customers to be your customers. And that's what, you need to, that's what you need to focus on, especially in the early years of your business. Um, I also could have called this talk, uh, let me talk about my pet peeves, because this is another one. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I really love data. I really dislike what people think, uh, that people think data is you know, insightful or useful in and of itself, because I, don't, I really don't think it is. There is no way that data can actually do something for you. Data-driven is not, does not mean anything to me because data doesn't drive anything. You are driving your business. You are actually the one, you know, making your business thrive. That data doesn't do anything until you want it to, until you ask it questions. So you need to ask the right questions to make sure you get to the right data. And that's really very important to ask the right questions. So ask the right questions to make sure that you are looking at the right data and not just pouring over your data for days on end and wasting time and wasting energy, because that's what you'll be doing. And asking the right questions can actually be hard, because as soon as, you, as, soon as you're in that data, well, you'll get distracted by the data and you'll end up a walking encyclopedia about your business of useless facts. But you'll, it's also hard to just think about, OK, what's, what are the questions I should be asking? What are the things I want to know? But these are the important things to do. And a, a great way of doing that would be talking to your customers. So talk to your customers about what makes them buy or not buy your product. Ask your customers what they think. And the things that they will get back to uh, or you know the questions they will get back to you is probably are probably more useful questions than you would have by looking just looking at your data because that's not the useful kind of tactic to to have in this in this situation so ask your customers the, the, those questions and then when they get back to you you'll get some 
you, you'll get some questions back or you'll get some ideas back and people will say, I would like this or I would like that. And if they do, you might get an idea about, okay, I want to improve this in my product. I want to fix this bug. I want to add this feature. And then when you want to add a feature, you'll have to think about data again. You have to think about how does this feature actually become successful? What is actually success? How do I define success? And how do I actually make sure that I can measure that success? Because if you don't know, if, if you don't know about that and you can't answer those questions, how would you know that the feature you built is actually useful? Or if it's actually the feature that you wanted to build or that your customers wanted you to build? These are very important questions to ask. And all of this is data as well. It's just very much more focused than going into Google Analytics and looking at stuff. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's important to do that. And that will give you focus. That will give you focus on your data. And you'll be looking at the right stuff. You'll be saving energy and time, again, to make sure that you're looking at the right stuff and also not looking at a lot of data and getting confused about what might be happening where. So keep focused on the important data, and you don't need the rest of that data. Now, when you're talking to your customers, um, I, think, I think there's a, there's a lot of things that you will find out. There's some nuance to what customers will be saying. I don't think they'll always have uh, a, a clear idea of what they're actually asking for. I think a lot of the times you'll, you'll, you'll get back like, okay, so your product is not really that modern, or your product is not really that sleek, or it's not really pretty. And I think that that is exactly uh, where you kind of need to focus on, okay, what, what is it they're actually saying? Because making a product prettier or more modern doesn't actually do anything for its use. Right? It doesn't make it easier to use. It doesn't make it better to use. It you know, basically does nothing for how well your product works. So it's not that important. But it could be that those customers are, saying, are actually saying something else. So they're saying they want a more modern or more sleek or more easy or more pretty, you know, a prettier design or whatever, because they actually find it hard to use, because they find it a bit difficult to navigate. And that's what, where I think you need to ask a bit more questions of your customers and just also really realize, what are you actually saying? I think our new Yoast SEO uh, UI, settings UI is actually a great example of that, because we've made our, our settings UI a lot more modern, a lot more sleek, a lot more all of those things. But that was never the goal. The goal was to make it a better product. The goal was to make it easier to maintain for ourselves and easier to use for the customers and easier to find settings for customers. And that's what we did. And our focus was making the thing better. And I think that's, that's what always should be the focus. I'll be saying that a lot <laughs> in this talk. So SEO is not a trick. I think uh, a lot of people still think like, OK, SEO is something that you need to do to get found on search engines. Um, OK, yes, that's true. But what it actually is is about getting the right content about a certain subject to your audience. And then you, yes, being found the best for that type of subject. But it is, not, it is not a trick. It is actually a very sustainable way of doing marketing. Because all the effort you'll, you'll put into SEO will last you for years to come, basically. It'll make sure that you will be found two years down the road, as opposed to, I just stopped paying and I'm not found anymore, which is advertising, which I dislike. Talked about that. Um, so I think it's very, very important that, and that, to, to realize that this is, a very important, uh, this is a very important step. But 
How do you then do that? Because the most important thing here is actually uh, your content. Because yes, there's also a lot of technical SEO, but you could be using Yoast SEO Premium for that, and we'll solve like 99% of, uh, of those issues. And then after that, you can focus on content. You can focus on the stuff that really matters, because content is where you actually explain what your product does, where you actually say, OK, these are the things that we do that others don't. Um, where you explain, OK, this is what I offer. This is, this is what I do. And that's the important part, right? Because that's where you sell your services. That's where you sell your products. And it's hard to figure out how am I actually going to find out what I should be writing about. You should be writing about your product, but how are you going to hook that up in, into the content? And that's actually where a course in our Yoast SEO uh, Academy comes in, comes in handy, which is our keyword research course. And it should really help you to, to just get to the right keywords. It, it's basically a step-by-step -step tutorial where you, what, which you'll go through, and you'll find out what keywords you should be focusing on based on what you want to do with your business. What's the most important thing? So once you've figured out what you are writing, what you're writing about, and what you're going to be focusing on in your content, you need to start writing that content. And then we're there to help you again, because we have three different content analyses. We have SEO analysis, we have the readability analysis, and we have the inclusivity analysis. And all of those, even though just the first is called SEO analysis, are actually important for SEO. Because it's, it's important because what we do is we give you feedback on this is what you can improve. This is what you can actually do better. And we, you can do better on being findable within Google or other search engines. You can do better on readability, accessibility, basically, of, of, your, of your content, making sure you reach more people that way, and inclusivity to make sure that you're, you know, making sure that most, the most possible people like what they're reading and how you're writing. So all of this will actually improve the quality of your content. And that's exactly what, what we should be doing. We should be focusing on that quality, quality of content, but also quality of product. So focus, on, focus your content on, on that quality, and you'll be set to go SEO-wise. Now, this is a very interesting one to me, because I feel like um, people have been doing m business for millennia, right? But within the, especially within the online e-commerce ecosystem, it seems like people are reinventing the wheel constantly. They're not looking back. They're not, they're not really checking out what past businesses have done. I mean, yes, the context is different. You have a different context of it's, it being online. But other than that, it's still business. You're still selling person to person, basically. So why are we continually reinventing this wheel? So for myself, I, I do like to keep a little thought experiment in mind, and I try to do that often. It's where, basically, I, I think about Yoast as a brick and mortar store in just a normal, real world street setting, street and shopping street setting, right? So there's people walking down the street, and your store is there. What makes them actually convinced that they need to go into that store? That's your shopping windows and probably your sign that's above the door or near there. And those are the things that you need to optimize. So those are basically your search results, right, in the search engine result pages. Those are the things that will convince people, OK, so they actually have what I need, because I can see their offering, and I understand what they're offering. But what happens when people actually then enter the store? What is the first thing that 
should happen? What kind of experience should they get? Should they walk in and have all the cameras be zoomed in on them? Or, you know, drones or whatever? And, and should they be followed everywhere they go? Should they be followed and, and filmed while, while they're picking stuff up and putting it down and putting it in their cart? Would that be a normal situation? Or maybe should someone come up and say, hello, can I help you? Or how can I help you? Think about what would be feeling normal in a normal situation, in a real world situation, and then think about what you're focusing on for your online business. Do those two match? Or are you maybe doing stuff online because you can, but not necessarily because you need to? I think about that a lot because, because the, the difference is just weird to me. The difference sometimes between online and offline is a weird situation, and it helps me to refocus on what I actually think is important, to refocus on, OK, so this is not, this is not the thing that I actually want to do. This is not the thing that I, I want to do it because it's interesting and it gives me more insight, but it's not really the thing that will help the business grow. It's not really the thing that's the most useful. Most useful. So when you think about that kind of thought experiment, I always, I always go to speed as well, because I think speed, especially online, is very important. You have a website, and it needs to be fast. Everyone kind of knows that, but I think the thought experiment of making it an offline experience kind of really exemplifies it, because what happens if they enter the store and the first five seconds they can't see anything? Or the first five seconds the store is slowly coming into focus? That would be a very disconcerting situation, right? For if this would happen in real life. And that's basically what you're doing. People are, people live, well, we all live in a world where, where everything happens instantaneously. So we can't really expect them to think it's normal to wait for stuff. Because it's not for them. Nothing, nothing is, you know, you don't have to wait for anything. Well, you have to wait before you reach your destination, but then everything else, you know, as soon as you already decided, I want to go into the store, you're there. So, optimize for speed to just make sure that you're not really breaking that real uh, that real life experience, because the more you break that real life experience, the more you will actually be, you know, it will be a detriment to your business, basically, because people will feel less at ease. Now, there are different ways of, of optimizing for speed as well. So you could have support tickets and you can think about your, um, you know, response time. Um, you could also think about, okay, I have a service. And I want to actually uh, make sure that I deliver this service on time. Amazon has a great creed for that, which is under promise, over deliver, which I always really like because it helps you focus on the right things, right? So, you know, so I want to I wanna deliver this for my customer. It'll take a week. I'll give it two weeks and say to the customer, I, I need two weeks because A, something might happen, but B, Chances are I'll over deliver and the customer will feel like it's a speedy assignment, right? Like it's done in a speedy way. And that's good. That makes them feel positive about it. And it didn't really cost you anything on your side either. So that's, I think there's multiple ways of optimizing for speed. But the real world examples really help me in my case to to make sure that I'm still focused on the things that we should be focused on. Now, optimize support. That is another one that um, that I uh, another one that I think is very important because I've been talking about product, I've been talking about uh, services and stuff like that. But I think support should always be a part of that. It should not be forgotten when thinking about 
what's important for your business. Because you can improve your product all you want, but if people come to you and ask a question and you don't respond in the way that they like, they might walk away to other people. Even though your product might be doing pretty well and might be very stable or whatever, if you can't help them the way they want to be helped, then they will still leave. So think about what will happen. Like, I'm optimizing my product, I'm building a product. What will happen if people actually start asking questions? How will I respond? How quickly will I respond? Should I manage people's expectations about how quickly I will respond or in what manner I will respond? Have you thought about how people can reach you and how you want to be reached? All of those things are very important to make sure that the entire experience of your product is just good. Because without, without having great support, you still can't have a great product, even though the product in and of itself might be great. And this has focus on you. I'm, it's basically about your competitors. So I think it's important that you really look at your competitors and really look at what your competitors are doing, but I would urge you not to be guided by what your competitors are doing. So they can maybe inspire you to do certain things, or they can, they can give you ideas like, okay, I can, build, I can build this as well, or I can build this better, or I can build this differently. But as long as you keep in touch with you and what you want your business to do, I keep in touch with what do you think makes your business stand out? That's fine. You just don't want to, you want to have the creativity basically rule what you're doing. And the originality, you want that to rule what you're doing. Instead of the fear of maybe not having what others have. Because that's okay. Others can have stuff that you, that you don't because that makes you different. So focus on you and make sure that you're, you're focused on what you think makes you stand out as a business. Well, I've, I've said it a couple times before. Um, focus on quality. I think that's the most important takeaway, actually, from this, from this whole talk. Focus, focus on quality and focus on the things that are important for your business. Focus on the things that make sure that your business thrives and do not get distracted by all of the other things that are happening in the world and all of the things that m might seem interesting but are really not. Because the quality and the stab stability, basically, of your product or of your service or whatever you're doing is the backbone of your entire business. You can't really do without having a quality product because that, that won't be sustainable, especially if you want to be you know, the best. You don't have to be the best at everything, just the best at what you do, the best at what you stand out in. I think that's very important. And this is just, this is just it. It's focus on quality and do what's right for your business. That was actually my talk. Um, <laughs> and I think there's time for questions. There's, there's still some time for questions now. And, and uh, I will be back at the booth as, actually as well after the talk. If anyone wants to talk, about, uh, talk to me or ask me any questions about that if you can't find the time now. And I want to thank you for listening.